Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video we are going to set up our retrofit with the Pixabay API and also Dagger Hilt. And as I already said in the introductory video, if you don't know how to use retrofit or Dagger Hilt or what that actually is, then I recommend to learn that first because as I said, I won't go too deep into that here. So I won't explain too much because I assume if you watch a, a, a series about testing, then you should know how to use these tools. Anyways, I am here on pixabay.com and I'm currently logged in. So you need to create an account here on this website to get your API key to access the Pixabay API so we can search through images. So uh, then if you are logged into pixabay.com, you can go to this explore tab up here and click on API to get access to the API. And then we click on get started scroll down and here is our api key with which we can access that api and i am actually not that sure anymore if you need to do some further steps here because quite some time passed since i made this but if so then the instructions will be here and after following through these instructions you will get your api key in this green box here and we will need this for this video so what we will do is we will make sure to copy that API key, go to our Android Studio project in our shopping list testing YouTube, at least that's how I called it. And where do we actually put that API key? Because I get this question so often, how you should secure your API keys. And in the end, there is no way that is 100% secure. So if you put your API key in your app, then this can be reverse engineered. And that is also not that difficult. So in the end, what you must do is you need to apply ProGuard um, to your app before you publish it. That will that can't hide that API key, but it can um, obfuscate your classes basically. So it will rename your classes, your functions, your objects, and all that stuff with short, unreadable names, so that the attacker has a very hard time finding your API key. So in the end, if you really want full security here, then you must put your API key on a server. And then of course, you also need a mechanism to authenticate requests to that server so that you don't hide the credentials to that server in this app, because then the attacker could just find the credentials and get the IP API key from the server by himself. So for example, if you have a login system and the user must log in to authenticate to make requests to the server, then this is fine if you then get the API key from the server afterwards after the user logged in. So only during a valid user session. But what we'll do here is we will put our API key in Gradle properties. So in that case, it will at least be secure from other people who work with you on a project since that is a file that is only on your local machine or actually can easily be put into gitignore and then it is only on your local machine and not in your git repository so we will open up this gradle properties file here and in here we will have another entry api underscore key and here we will simply paste what we just copied from pixabay and then the next step is to go to our build gradle file module app so where we have our dependencies and inside of this default config block, we want to just tell Gradle that we added this entry here in the Gradle properties file. So what we will have here is build config field. And that will now take three parameters. On the one hand, which type of config field that is, which is just a string here. Then we need to specify the field name of that field, which is API underscore key. And then again, API underscore key without quotation marks. And then if you use Git, you should now put this file into your Git ignore file. So let's go to this project hierarchy here and switch to the project view. Open that up and open this Git ignore file in which we will simply add our Gradle properties file so that this won't be included in commits to your remote repository. And then we want to synchronize Gradle on the top right corner here. And we also want to rebuild our project afterwards because Gradle will include those, um, that variable actually that we included, so our API key in a class called build config. So everywhere in our app, we can then access that API key without revealing it. So actually go to build and rebuild project and then wait until this is finished. Then next, let's actually start to set up retrofit.
And for that, we first need to define the response classes that we get from our API. And since to actually find that out, we must make a request to the Pixabay servers and take a look at the response and then reconstruct the Kotlin cl class out of that. And since that is pretty impractical for a video here, I already did that. So you can just go to the GitHub link in the description and get the same response classes as I have here because that really does not need to be part of a tutorial here to show you how we can make an actual API request outside of Android Studio. If you're still wondering how I did that, then you just use the program Postman. That is a program to simulate API requests and that will just give you a response for any search string. So you just specify the URL you want to um, get something from and parameters and then it will give you the response. You just take the response and use, there's a plugin I think called JSON to Kotlin class or something like that, that will just take a JSON response and convert that to Kotlin classes. So exactly what we want here. So I will actually switch back to Android here and in our Java com shopping list testing YouTube folder here and in our data folder actually, we will have a remote folder so new package, remote dot responses, press enter here. And instead of this responses package, I will actually paste those two classes I have. So just press OK here. And as I said, you can just get these from my GitHub. And I actually need to change this package name here to shopping list testing YouTube. And we need to import image result, which is another class I pasted here. So that is our actual image response. These hits here contain the list of the actual image results. So you can see that right after I showed you this class here, we have a variable for the total and for the total hits. So actually how many images we found, uh, that is actually not important for us. We only want the URLs of the images. So in our image result data class here, that was a little bit bigger, but as I said, we only are interested in this preview URL here. And here I actually also need to change the package name. All right, so the next step is to actually create our API interface. So inside of our remote package, we will create a new Kotlin fellow class that will be an interface and I'll call it Pixabay API. Press enter here. And in here, we will only have a single function just to search in our API for images. So in here, we will have a get request to the Pixabay servers at the URL of slash API slash. And uh, that will be a suspend function search for image. And that will on the one hand take the actual search string as a parameter. So what we actually want to search for. And on the other hand, it takes the API key as a parameter. So first of all, we have a query parameter here, which is called Q for the query. So the actual search string call that search query, which is a string. And we will have a query parameter here for the key. So our API key call that API key, which is a string as well. And now we can set that by default to build config dot API key. So you can see we don't reveal our actual API key here. And the result of that function will be of type response image result or image response actually not image result because the image response contains a list of image results. Now the next step is to actually also create our actual singleton of retrofit. And we can also right away just create the singleton of our room database. But for that, we first need to set up Dagger Hilt so we can actually inject those singletons later on. So what we will do is for Dagger Hilt, we always need to create an application class first. So let's go to our project root package, create a new Kotlin file class, call that shopping application, select class here. And that will inherit from application. Doesn't have a body here and we will annotate it with at Hilt Android app. So that is always the same flow with Dago Hilt, we create an application class and annotate that with Hilt Android app. And then in our manifest file, we of course need to add that application class here in our application tag. So name, and that is shopping application. And then we can close that again, and the application class as well. 
Now we need to define a module where we will provide those dependencies. So on the one hand, our room singleton and our retrofit singleton. Let's do that in another package. So our root package, create a new package here called DI for dependency injection. And in here, we will create a new Kotlin follow class called app module and select object here. We annotate that with add module as always with dagger hilt and we want to install this module in the application component of dagger hilt android components double colon class so if you don't know what this installing means here that will just make sure that the lifetime of the dependencies we declare here in this module will be as long as our application lives so those will be singletons actually so which dependencies do we actually have here first of all our room database of course so we will have a function provide shopping item database uh, that will take uh, the application context so we annotate that with add application context like this and we will set that equal to room dot database builder pass that context here we need to pass a class which is shopping item database double colon class to java and we need to specify a name for that let's actually choose a constant here database underscore name create a new package in our root package called other and in here we will create a constants file so new kotlin file of class call that constants and that will be an object so a singleton in here we will then have our const val database name and that will just be shopping underscore db and then in our app module we can import that constant and call dot build on that and of course we also should annotate that with add singleton on the one hand and on the other hand with add provides so that we tell dagger that we provide this room database here uh, then uh, the next step is let's actually also create a function to provide our DAO object so again add singleton although that is not necessarily needed for the DAO object here but let's still do that right at provides function provide shopping DAO and that will now take our database which is a shopping database shopping item database and we just set that equal to database dot shopping DAO. All right, that's it for our room database. Let's now worry about retrofit, which is also pretty easy here. So just let's directly annotate that with add singleton and add provides. And that will just be a function provide Pixabay API. Uh, this won't take any parameters, but it will return a Pixabay API. And in here we just return um retrofit dot builder dot add converter factory and that will be a json converter factory dot create we will set the base url to let's say base url as a constant and define that again in our constants file here so we just create a new const val here for the base url which is equal to https slash slash pixabay.com like this and then we can go back to our app module import that base url and what else do we need here actually we already have everything we need here so let's call dot build not base url again dot build and dot create and we want to create a pixabay api double colon class dot java so uh, that's it for this video. As I said, not every video in this series will be about testing itself because as, as you know, I show you that on a real project here and we have to build that project next to the testing stuff, of course. But as I said, this is the way how you will learn the most about testing. So after this playlist, you actually are ready to apply these principles directly into practice into your own projects. If you like this video, please comment below give it a like and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already which I think 50% of my viewers haven't even done so please do that it's just a single click and you get Android content 
every second day, just as usual. Have a wonderful day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.